Hi everyone. This is a compilation, a mega compilation of all the fast food jokes. Eat fresh! <laughs> I've done over my career, over the nine or ten specials, depending on whether you include other ones. Anyway, if you enjoy the video, please hit subscribe. I'll be posting a new video every day at 10 a.m. during this crazy time we are living in. Also, turn on your notifications if you want to be notified of the daily video. Take care of yourself. And I know I look like a mess, because I am a mess. This is weird. Here's fast food. We're never satisfied when it comes to food. You know what be good on this burger? A ham sandwich. <laughs> Instead of a bun, let's use two donuts. <laughs> that way we can have it for breakfast. Look out, McGriddle, here comes the donut ham hamburger. <laughs> you guys laugh, but you know there's someone at Dunkin' Donuts going, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> then we could have the diet donut ham hamburger. Because we need the variety. We want our food fast, too, don't we? That's why we really love those value meals. Just have to say a number. Two! <laughs> oh, no. Soon you won't have to speak, it'll just be a noise. Eh. <laughs> All right, I'll supersize it. <laughs> we need our food fast. That's the real appeal of Chinese food. Yeah. But Chinese food almost comes too quickly. You're like, yeah, I will have, oh, there it is. How'd you know I even wanted that? <laughs> Fastest to prepare, slowest to eat. I prefer the Chinese restaurants that have the silverware on the table when you arrive, because there's nothing more humiliating than starting with chopsticks and having to turn to the waiter and be like, uh, yeah, hi, uh, I'm too white. Uh, do, you, do you have a shovel back there? Uh, chopsticks are fun, but I'd rather eat than play Operation. <laughs> yeah. We're lazy about our food. We have people deliver it to us. Yeah, yeah I like your food, uh, just not enough to go down there and get it. <laughs> Delivery is really a combination of my two favorite activities, eating and not moving. <laughs> Worst part of delivery is getting up and answering the door. <laughs> oh, this is a pain in the ass. What, am I the butler? Well, at least I don't have to put on pants. Hand it over. We're getting lazier. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I want delivery and I'm going to need someone to feed me. <laughs> no, no, I'll be in the tub. <laughs> yeah, key is under the mat. Chip, chop, chip. Chip, chop, chip. I don't even know what chip, chop, chip is supposed to mean. <laughs> I'm not good at ordering delivery. I always think I'm ready. I never am. I always get that order panic. Delivery, what do you want? Oh, 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 you got food there? Yes, we have food. What do you want? Oh, 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 let me write it down. I'll call you back. Oh, I wasn't ready for the trick questions. I am. I try to rationalize what I eat, but there's some food there's no reason to ever eat. Like a Cinnabon. I mean, tell me that place isn't run by Satan. You ever eat a Cinnabon? You have to take a nap halfway through. Oh, I think I need some insulin. And a wheelbarrow for my half a bun. It's kind of generous calling that a bun. It's the size of a beanbag chair. Oh, should I sit in it or eat it? Hey, I could sit in it and eat it. Oh, this is sticky without pants on. He has his pants off in a lot of jokes. <laughs> how about that, how about that Cinnabon odor? You ever been walking through the mall? You're like, what's that smell? Oh, I just got a cavity. <laughs> Damn Cinnabons. Hey, I've done some humiliating things, but standing in that Cinnabon line is up there. Everyone's so filled with shame. No one's trying to make eye contact. Uh, I'm just here for the napkins. 
on a pig like you guys. Because there's no reason to have a Cinnabon. I've tried to find one. Yeah. So I'm about to get on a plane. Uh, how about eight pounds of cake? Seems reasonable. A little dessert on the go. You ever eat fast food in front of a vegetarian? They look at you like you're barbecuing a kitten. Oh my God, you're eating that? Yeah, and I'm not going to digest it for a decade. <laughs> Come along with me. My problem is I love all the food that's bad for you, like bacon. We know you like bacon. <laughs> and fried chicken. You ever put a piece of fried chicken on a paper napkin, you come back and the napkins turn into liquid? <laughs> fried chicken can't be good for you, really. I mean, one of the serving sizes is bucket. Isn't that how we feed farm animals? Yeah, I have a bucket of fried chicken, a silo of Pepsi, and a trough of pig slop. Make the pig slop diet. Speaking of pig slop, have you tried one of those KFC bowls? It's like KFC as a corporation decided, you know, all our crap tastes the same, why don't we just throw it in a bowl? And I'll tell you, it's delicious. It has a layer of mashed potatoes, a layer of corn, a layer of cigarette butts, a couple of apple cores. It's like Charlotte's Web. Where's Templeton? Popeyes is my favorite fried chicken. I love Popeyes. I love that name. Oh, I get it. Popeye was a sailor, and your food goes through me like a torpedo. That makes sense. Popeye ate spinach, and now I have dysentery. <laughs> Popeye had muscles, I can't stand up. Maybe they're not talking about the cartoon character Popeye. Maybe they're talking about what happens to your eyes after you eat the food. <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts! Dunkin' Donuts! New England loves their Dunkin' Donuts. Some people love Dunkin' Donuts too much. Dunkin' Donuts is awesome! Uh, I think they're just making donuts, not curing lupus. I like Dunkin' Donuts, but have you been to a Dunkin' Donuts that doesn't have a homeless guy standing in front? Is that part of the design plans? There'll be an entrance here, a deranged lunatic here. There's always a guy standing out there like their Ronald McDonald. Dunkin' Donuts. It's an interesting concept, really. It's almost as if AA opened their own restaurant. What should we have? Coffee? Donuts? Maybe a little honesty. <laughs> Hi, my name's Jim. I haven't had a donut in 30 seconds. I don't know how Dunkin' Donuts even stays in business. They sell 3,000 donuts. What do they make, 30 bucks? Whenever I go in there, it seems like they're trying to get rid of the donuts. Like, yeah, I'll have uh, six donuts. That'll be three dollars, but if you get a dozen, it's a nickel. <laughs> How much are two dozen? We give you ten bucks. <laughs> They're either trying to get rid of them or trying to get us addicted. You ever buy a couple of donuts, you open it up, and there's some free munchkins in there? Those are the gateway donut. <laughs> First time's always free. Now at some locations, they have Dunkin' Donuts and Baskin Robbins in the same building. It's like a marriage made in obesity. <laughs> Finally, Dunkin' Donuts is offering something for dessert. <laughs> Donuts and ice cream. It's like two pairs of dirty underwear. <laughs> I eat the fast food, I do. It's amazing how our attitude on fast food changes. When you're a kid, it's your favorite place. But as an adult, you look at fast food like someone you used to date. <laughs> I can't believe I ever went there. <laughs> then the next night, well, it's late. <laughs> and I'm drunk, so. <laughs> We're all so embarrassed to eat fast food. You ever go in there, everyone's sitting by themselves, they're hunched over, wearing a ski mask. <laughs> Don't tell my wife I'm here! They know we're embarrassed to eat fast food. That's why they invented the drive-thru. Look, no one has to see it. Just drive around back. We'll hand it out the window. <laughs> uh, 
That drive through is pretty convenient, right? Except for that final stretch for your food. You're like, uh, can you bring your building closer to my car? <sighs> do I have to do everything? What a pain in the ass. Why is he reaching out the passenger side of the car? <laughs> These fast food places are just so fast and easy, they've ruined me for regular restaurants. Whenever I'm in a regular restaurant, I'm always like, let's see, I will order the hamburger. Where is it? <laughs> uh, sir, how would you like your hamburger done? Uh, right now, where is it? <laughs> and can you wrap it in paper so I feel like I'm opening a present? Or maybe put it in a styrofoam clamshell and present it like an engagement ring? <gasps> I do. <laughs> Too bad all the food at fast food places is so bad for you. I love how there's the option of a milkshake. You're like, well, I shouldn't, but I'm in a hurry, so I'll get a burger and fries, and to drink, I'll have the large cup of melted ice cream. Do you have an EKG machine back there? <laughs> Most restaurants try and set a mood. You know, you go in there, you're like, oh, I feel like I'm in a Tuscan villa. <laughs> Fast food places are brightly lit, smell like disinfectant, the furniture's bolted down. <laughs> Where am I, a mental institution? <laughs> we gotta get out of here! <laughs> I love the fast food. I do wish it was there when they decided on the size of those ketchup packets. I'm not saying I need a gallon, but maybe enough for more than one fry. I always end up opening 20, I look like a heroin addict. I'm gonna party once I get set up here. Has anyone ever used just one ketchup packet? Do you have a half of a quarter of an ounce of ketchup? It's just so darn rich. I need a resealable packet. One that I could store in my purse. They always give you three packets. When you go back up and ask for more, the guy handing them out always treats you like you're taking from his personal stash. <laughs> oh, looks like my kids aren't having ketchup tonight. <laughs> Enjoy, ketchup glutton. <laughs> Sometimes printed on the ketchup packet, it'll say, not for resale. I didn't know that was an issue. I've been to a lot of flea markets, no ketchup packets. And you know what, if you're in a position where you have to sell ketchup packets, I don't think that's gonna hold you back. We need money, maybe we should sell these ketchup packets. Oh, we can't, it says not for resale. <laughs> Dang it. If you're lucky, you'll get a ketchup packet that's labeled as fancy ketchup. <laughs> ketchup, you're being modest. You're way more than fancy, you're elegant. <laughs> I know it's all relative, but what kind of life are you leading where you consider ketchup fancy? Well, we ain't rich folk, but on special occasions, I'll break out the ketchup. <laughs> Grandma's birthday, make her feel like a celebrity. <laughs> ketchup. Some fast food places, they have that ketchup pump. It's like a keg. They give you the paper shot glass. I always like to hang around there, try and meet the ladies. Here, I'll pump for you. You come to this Wendy's often? My roommate and I, we got a pony pump back in my door. Here's an extra shot for your cute friend. How many shots of ketchup do you get? I usually get like three, but if I've had a bad day, I'll get five. My wife thinks I'm trash because I use a lot of ketchup on my sushi. <laughs> I find it gets rid of the fish flavor. <laughs> How about those people that don't use ketchup? What are they called again? Al-Qaeda? Ugh. <laughs> ketchup. <laughs> the upside down bottle of ketchup, have you seen that? Don't you think it's a little embarrassing how long it took us to come up with the upside down bottle? <laughs> it was only like six months ago. Some guy was like, you know, we only use it like this. <laughs> Why don't we just put the cap on the bottom? <laughs> Have people been complaining ketchup is hard to get out of the bottle? <laughs> For like a hundred years. <laughs> I'll talk to our gravity experts. <laughs> ketchup is hard to get out of a bottle. You know, I was like, <laughs> you guys go on without me. 
I mean, uh, just leave me water. You ever been given one of those tiny ketchup bottles? They're like 90% glass. This is adorable, but I want ketchup, not a Christmas ornament. I'll put this with my other glass menagerie. Ketchup. I, I never thought I'd miss a bacon joke. Salsa is like the Mexican ketchup. Marinara is the Italian ketchup, and British food is terrible. <laughs> Actually, vinegar, vinegar is the British ketchup. How bad is your food when adding vinegar improves it? You know what I use vinegar for? Cleaning windows. The British are our only allies. Why would he be so reckless? With his edgy ketchup jokes. Speaking of diapers, I went to Waffle House last night. <laughs> Tell you, I thought the IHOP was a dump until I went into a Waffle House. Wow, they're not even trying in there. Here's something you'll never hear in a Waffle House. Nice job cleaning up. Now, if you've never been to a Waffle House, just imagine a gas station bathroom that sells waffles. And you've been to a Waffle House. I love Waffle House. And not just because watching someone fry an egg while they're smoking reminds me of my dad. It's the people in there. It's like a white trash convention. Or for me, a family reunion. <laughs> It's so white trash in there, it makes the IHOP appear international. <laughs> I've seen a gun five times in my life. Three of them have been in Waffle House. <laughs> it's definitely a dangerous feel to them. You know, even the Waffle House sign looks like a ransom note. <laughs> There's always a letter out, occasionally it'll be the W, so it'll read Awful House. <laughs> uh, that's where I'm gonna go at 2 a.m. That's when everyone goes. Their slogan should be, it's 2 a.m., still time to make one more bad decision. <laughs> you go in there. You go in there, everyone's drunk. You know everyone's drunk in Waffle House because they have pictures of the food on the menu. <laughs> How drunk do you have to be to not remember what a waffle looks like? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's like a plaid pancake. <laughs> I'll have 12 of those for a nickel. You ever go in a Waffle House during the day? That's weird. This place looks familiar. I think I threw up in here. Oh, there it is. There's some thin people at my gym. I saw this one woman, she was so skinny, you could actually see her ribs. And all I could think was, I haven't had a McRib in forever. And those are delicioso. I reference McDonald's a lot, because I go to McDonald's. <laughs> I love the silence that follows that statement. <laughs> like I just admitted to support dog fighting or something. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> McDonald's. It's fun telling people you go to McDonald's. They always give you that look like, oh, uh, I didn't know I was better than you. to go into McDonald's. They sell six billion hamburgers a day. There's only 300 million people in this country. It's like, hmm, I'm not a calculus teacher, but I think everyone's lying. <laughs> you ever been at McDonald's and you see a friend for a second, you're like, oh crap. <laughs> Eventually you're like, hey, 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 what's going on? And they're just like, I'm just here for the 99 cent ATM. What are you doing here, Jim? <laughs> I'm just meeting a hooker. <laughs> Certainly not eating here, that's for sure. Yeah, he, he should be here by now. Because I... <laughs> we all know better, right? We've all read the articles, seen those documentaries. It's the same message. Look, McDonald's is really bad for you. It's very high in fat and calories, and we don't even know where the meat comes from. And we're all like, that's disgusting. I'll have a Big Mac. 
a Lars Fry and a two-gallon drum of Diet Coke. Because <laughs> there's a McDonald's denial. We all embrace it. No one's going in there innocent. We're walking into a red and yellow building with a giant M over it. Was this a library? Well, I'll get some fries while I'm here. Because those McDonald's fries are truly amazing, right? Has your mother ever made anything as good as a McDonald's fry? Not even close. We lie to ourselves when we eat McDonald's fries. We're like, oh, they're so thin, they couldn't be fattening. <laughs> you ever eat too many McDonald's fries? Of course not! <laughs> There's never enough of them! There's always that moment when you're eating McDonald's fries where you're like, what happened? <laughs> Where'd they go? <laughs> then you start scrounging for the fry crumbs. You're like, hmm. Oh, that's just a piece of paper from the straw. <laughs> but it was touching the fries, so... <laughs> Sometimes there's a loose fry in the back. You know the bonus fry? It's like Jesus is up in heaven. Give him an extra fry. <laughs> He'll pay it forward. <laughs> By the way, that's how Jesus sounds. Or at least I hope. You wouldn't want to meet Jesus and he's like, Hey, y'all, how you did? <laughs> you been turn that other cheek out, give me that bonus fry for a rehang. <laughs> that bonus fry, it's never a regular size fry. It's always extra long. You're like, how'd I miss you? <laughs> bonus fry, you got your own ketchup packet. <laughs> you always savor the last fry. You're like, I'm gonna turn this into 10 bites. I'll meet up with you later. I got the bonus fry. <laughs> Fries are amazing. For what, like seven minutes? And then they turn into something that's likely not biodegradable? <laughs> you ever make the mistake of reheating McDonald's fries in the microwave? They become packing peanuts. <laughs> Doesn't stop you from eating them. You're like, these aren't even good anymore. How are yours? Yeah, yours aren't good either. <laughs> Fries can't get cold. Shakes can't get warm. You ever leave a McDonald's shake out for an hour? Reality sets in. Oh, this isn't even made from milk. It's just some kind of chocolate mucus. <laughs> but we know all this, yeah. We know those McDonald's commercials aren't realistic. Yeah. i just like to see one commercial that showed people five minutes after they ate McDonald's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now I need a cigarette. <laughs> I deserve a cigarette break today. <laughs> but they get us in there, yeah. Some of those deals they offer are just cruel. Two Big Macs for two bucks? I drive by, I'm like, well, I don't want to lose money on this. <laughs> I'll get 80 of them. <laughs> I know some of you are like, sorry, white trashy guy, I don't eat McDonald's. I have friends that brag about not going to McDonald's. I would never go to McDonald's. Well, McDonald's wouldn't want you because you're a dick. <laughs> people acting like they're better than McDonald's. It's like, you may have never set foot in McDonald's, but you have your own McDonald's. You know, maybe instead of buying a Big Mac, you read Us Weekly. Hey, that's still McDonald's. It's just served up a little different. Maybe your McDonald's is telling yourself that Starbucks Frappuccino is not a milkshake. Or maybe you watch Glee. It's all McDonald's. McDonald's of the soul. Momentary pleasure followed by incredible guilt eventually leading to cancer. <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> we all have our own. We all have our own McDonald's, you know. 
It may take me a while to digest my quarter pounder with cheese, but that tramp stamp is forever. <laughs> do, 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 do. Mistake. <laughs> really, it's all McDonald's out there, right? How can we all name three people that have dated Jennifer Aniston? It's McDonald's. And we gobble it up just like those McDonald's fries. It's like, who's she dating now? Mm -hmm. I know I shouldn't, but it's so salty. Is she pregnant yet? That's not even my business. Scarlett Johansson got a haircut. Why do I give a shit? Because it's McDonald's. And it feels good going down. By the way, if you care who Prince William married, that's Burger King. That's not even our gossip. I just love the societal outrage at McDonald's. McDonald's, there's no nutritional value. There's no vitamins. McDonald's is like, excuse me, we sell burgers and fries. We never said we're a farmer's market. <laughs> Heck, our spokesman is a pedophile clown from the 70s. <laughs> what do you want from us, America? <laughs> we treat McDonald's horribly. We behave like some hormonal teenager dealing with their parents. I hate you, you're gross. <laughs> When's dinner? <laughs> really going to McDonald's is kind of like attending a family reunion. You're always excited to go, you think it's gonna be awesome. And then when you get there, you're like, oh, I don't know if I should be here. <laughs> and then when you leave, you're like, I think I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> But I was raised on McDonald's, and I turned out, well, maybe that's not the best reasoning. <laughs> McDonald's has given us so much. We wouldn't know when breakfast ends if there was no McDonald's. <laughs> I'd be eating eggs at 5 p.m. like a moron. <laughs> Thank you, McDonald's. How are we supposed to know St. Patrick's Day is coming up without the shamrock shake? <laughs> Thank you, McDonald's. Without McDonald's, how would I communicate to the world that I give up? Because <laughs> if you're over the age of 10 and you're eating McDonald's, you've given up a little bit. I identify with Wills, you know, I struggle with my weight. I'm on this uh, fancy diet, that Domino's pasta bread bowl diet. <laughs> it's going all right. It's all right. <laughs> Have you seen the Domino's pasta bread bowl? It's a bread bowl filled with pasta, covered in cheese. The only ingredient missing, a suicide note. <laughs> I eat unhealthy. I actually enjoy eating unhealthy, but a Domino's pasta bread bowl? I mean, I got kids. I don't want one of them in a therapist's office. If my dad loved me, why would he eat a Domino's pasta bread bowl? Pasta in a bread bowl? That's a sign of a serious eating disorder, isn't it? I was out of control. I was putting pasta in bread bowls. It's a matter of time before I cover it with cheese. I needed help. I went to a meeting. It worked out. <laughs> I love how Domino's presents it as some traditional entree from the old country. Ah, uh, the pasta bread bowl. It's just like a mama Domino used to make. Every Sunday, you get out of my kitchen when I make the pasta bread bowl. What's the matter for you? I'll break on your face all the stereotypical phrases. <laughs> I don't even know how you would come up with that idea. All right, we need a healthy alternative to the pizza, something like a salad. Uh, do you mean like a bread bowl filled with pasta covered in cheese? <laughs> no, I was thinking like a salad with lettuce. Oh, we could do that. Or we could fill pasta with bread and inject it in people's butts. Do you even work here? <laughs> no, not really. I love the idea that there's someone at the Domino's headquarters taking credit for that, you know? Johnson, you came up with a pasta bread bowl. I sure did, sir. Yeah, we've been contacted by the Hague. You're being prosecuted for crimes against humanity. <laughs> I have tried the Domino's pasta bread bowl. I was at a party, someone brought it, and then they died. <laughs> And I have to admit, the entire time I was eating the Domino's pasta bread bowl, I was thinking, this could use a side of mashed potatoes. <laughs> it was carbolicious. 
But Domino's is all carbs, right? They got the breadsticks and the cinnamon sticks. <gasps> Why don't we get a pizza and it's an appetizer? We can have bread. <laughs> and for dessert, how about this? Bread. <laughs> Maybe I'll open a nice bottle of bread. <laughs> we can rub bread on each other. Bread, bread, bread. Bread. <laughs> I think Domino's is trying to kill us. I can't figure out those Domino's deals. You can get one large pizza for $15.99 or two large pizzas for a nickel. <laughs> if we get them so fat they can't leave the house, then they have to call us again. It's called the Domino's effect. <laughs> so simple. Domino's. Now offering sandwiches. Finally. <laughs> Pasta sandwiches. <laughs> Just whenever Domino's introduces a new product, I was like, I don't know if you guys have mastered the pizza yet. <laughs> I don't think the crust and the box are supposed to be the same material. <laughs> but Domino's, they're doing the sandwiches because of the success of those Subway restaurants, right? Those Subway restaurants are everywhere. I got one backstage in my bathroom. <laughs> Subway, that was a bit of a disappointment, Subway, right? You're like, hey, Subway, eat fresh. And then you bite in, you're like, not so fresh. <laughs> not fresh at all. <laughs> Even if you haven't been to Subway, you probably walked by and breathed in that bread exhaust they pump out. Like, ah, the smell of bread that was just baked in a dirty dishwasher. <laughs> I don't know if it's making me hungry or concerned for the ozone. <laughs> but I go to Subway. You know, and not just because it's fun watching a clinically depressed person throw together your sandwich. <laughs> they make it right in front of us. You'd think they'd do it with a little bit of flair. <laughs> you want mayonnaise? Uh, sure. <laughs> I feel like I'm at Benihana. <laughs> Can I get my picture with you? It's kind of awkward while they make your sandwich. You just stand there wishing the sneeze guard was facing the other way. <laughs> As you watch them do everything in those plastic CSI gloves before they make your sandwich. Let me just tie up this garbage bag. <laughs> scoop up these heroin needles. Now, what kind of triangle of cheese would you like on your sub? That cheese, there are mice that would turn down that cheese. <laughs> Did we silently mind will them to try and give us another piece? Like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Have you tried one of the Subway melts where they heat up your sandwich in that toaster oven they stole from someone's dorm room? <laughs> Is this even a restaurant? Subway shows you how lazy we've gotten, right? You know, I can understand the convenience of a burger and fries. You know, who's got time? Who's got a deep fryer? But we're too lazy to make a sandwich? <laughs> well, I can make one at home for 20 cents. Or I can watch the sociopath make it. <laughs> the Subway guys are not sociopaths. I mean, they do have kind of that faraway look in their eyes. In my country, I was attorney general. <laughs> Would you like Santa Fe sauce? <laughs> I love all the steps you have to follow at Subway before they slide your sandwich in that plastic air sickness bag. <laughs> the first step is you have to pick out your bread, and by that they mean pick out the color of your bread. Because it all tastes the same. <laughs> Do I want the whole wheat colored bread or the Italian colored bread? All the toppings are free at Subway. Free What's next, free napkins? I think the toppings are free to distract us from the fact we shouldn't be paying for the meat. They're so stingy with that nasty ass meat at Subway. They just peel it off like it's from a wad of ones or something. Here's three slices of ham, get yourself something nice, all right? Don't say it ain't done on for you. It's so simple. 
Have you tried the soup at Subway? And I'm not talking about the tuna salad. I always get the tuna where they ladle out your tuna under the bread. There's always that white puddle of tuna water. It's like a tuna gazpacho. I just want to bring in a really long straw and you're going <laughs> Oh, that's where I crossed the line? <laughs> that was funny too, did that tuna water joke. My fiance is allergic to tuna water. I don't appreciate the inconsideration. As if anyone in the Washington DC metropolitan area would sound like this voice he's doing right now. I think the accent actually changed in the middle of the joke. <laughs> Someone told me they saw a drive through Subway. I don't even know how that would work. All right, pick out your bread, drive up six inches. <laughs> Lettuce, tomatoes. Oh, you want to toast it? Honey, you got to drive all the way around. <laughs> if you go to Subway as often as I do, you'll notice there's a front room and then there's a back room. Sometimes the subway guy will go in the back room like, oh, what's going on back there? <laughs> I know the kitchen's not back there because the kitchen is the toaster oven. <laughs> you think Jared's back there? <laughs> I'm the great and powerful Jared. Bring me the broomstick of Little Caesar. <laughs> Jared. I say Jared and we all know who I'm talking about, right? We all like Jared, he seems like a good guy, but deep down we all come around and see that fat Jared again. <laughs> come on, Jared, we all struggle. But Jared, can you imagine how obsessed Subway is with keeping Jared thin? Jared, Merry Christmas, we got you another treadmill and a bag of laxatives. <laughs> Dig in, buddy. But Jared, he's hung in there, you know, he's kept the weight off. He's been their spokesman for so long. There are kids that don't even know about the fat Jared. My 10-year-old nephew thought Jared was the owner of Subway. I was like, no, he's a big fat guy who ate all these hoagies and now he's thin. Even my nephew was like, well, that's bullshit. Because <laughs> of course, Jared didn't lose the weight just eating Subway sandwiches. He switched from eating burgers and fries every day to eating Subway sandwiches every day. So as a result, we view going to Subway as a healthy activity. It's like, well, I can go jogging or I can go to Subway and have a meatball sub. <laughs> what level of delusion are we in? Where we view a meatball sub as a healthy alternative to a hamburger. It's like, how do you make a meatball sub? You roll five hamburgers into balls, <laughs> cover them in cheese, and put them on a bun that holds five hamburgers. <laughs> Eat fresh. In Los Angeles, there's a place called Yum Yum Donuts. It's like, what do you need the IQ of one to find that appealing? <laughs> yum Yum. <laughs> Me like Yum Yum. It's like, who's the target audience, cavemen? <laughs> I know two things, yellow fireball, rising sky, and Yum Yum Donuts. <laughs> yum Yum Donuts, Yum Yum. I have to admit, I'm a little disappointed by the, uh, number of Tim Hortons in town. <laughs> There's some, but you go, to, you go to some cities in Canada and the number of Tim Hortons is uncomfortable. <laughs> like you drive by the fifth one and you're like, uh, uh, is this a Tim Hortons theme park? <laughs> Are we sure they're only selling coffee and donuts? <laughs> That's... Canadians, you guys are always like, That's our Dunkin' Donuts. That's our, that's our Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, in America, we don't have Dunkin' Donuts on every block. <laughs> Tim Hortons is like America's stop sign. <laughs> now, now there's, I've seen some Tim Hortons in America, and whenever I see a Tim Hortons in America, I always have the same thought. Don't force your culture on us. <laughs> you know? but you wouldn't know how that feels. Hi, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you want. If you want to see more stand-up, I have more stand-up, or if you want to see an original show like Let's Get Cooking or The Mike and Pat Show, 
that's available on my channel, but also just know that I'll be posting a new video every day during this pandemic or until the world ends. Please hit subscribe and turn on your alert or notification button.